So, Jeff, here's what I here's what I've been saying in my uh, in my campaign. We really need to have more community buy in. You are absolutely right. I agree with you there. We need to make sure that communities see the benefit of having these large ener- energy uh this large en- energy infrastructure in their communities. We, we need a better process to, uh, to create that buy-in, whether it's co-ops or whether it's uh, better consultation. So I'm willing to look at how we can get that community buy-in so that, so that we've got willing hosts for uh, this green energy and also so that we can have communities participating in uh, the production of, uh, of renewables. So I think you're on to something there. All right. Well, that certainly has been a subject of great controversy. Probably cost you some seats in the last election because people were mad about the uh, the whole wind power thing in particular. And I think I think part of the reason, John, is that we didn't have that community good community process, you know. And we need we need more of that. I'm absolutely committed. Nope. Uh, Jeff is on the line. Jeff? Hello, hello, Kathleen. Uh, I spoke with you about a year ago on John Tory's show on News Talk 1010. You said we needed to make sure that communities see the benefit of having these large energy infrastructures in, the, in their community, and you were committed to a better process. So my question is, now that the province has scrapped the feed and tariff program for proposals over 500 kilowatts, uh, I would suggest that a top priority for the two for the budget should be an investment to give communities the tools to actively participate in the new competitive process that's coming out. Well, and Jeff, I know you're uh, I know you're a, a huge advocate of this, and I know that we have uh, we have talked at various times. And you you're aware that the new process that the Minister of Energy has put in place uh, allows communities to take a much more active role. We've certainly weighted the process towards communities now so that they can have buy-in. Uh, you know. Quite frankly, Jeff, if I could rewind the clock and we could start all over again on uh, energy infrastructure, we'd have that community planning process in place. And Glenn has been an advocate of that from the beginning. We are making those changes. And I thank you very much for that call. Mary uh, from Caledon, we'll, uh, we'll take your call when we come back. Our abandonment of long-term thinking in favor of expedience continues to plague the planning process. Perhaps the best example of this, described in the report, is the explanation of the true origin of the gas plant fiasco. If we had not abandoned the time-tested and thoughtful environmental assessment approach to approving and citing gas generation projects, we'd be a billion dollars richer and not have wasted three years of squabbling in the legislature. So we are not doing well dealing with our old challenges, and yet, truly, there are new challenges we must meet. Perhaps they are the greatest challenges that humankind has ever had to face. I hope that we can recover some of the wisdom that's been lost and restore to a new generation of public servants the capacity to respond to these problems. Much depends on it. Thank you. I'll take your questions. At a time when the economy and job creation is number one in the uh, all three parties' priorities, how does the environment and its priorities fit into that? Does anybody here remember a time when job creation and the economy weren't the priorities of government? I don't. Uh, and the reality is that we've been putting pushing uh, environment back for so many years. Now the problems are accumulating and becoming more severe, and they are substantively affecting the economy and job creation. And we can continue to be naive and do so, but uh, clearly that is a counterproductive.